our resting place not in device no greed I trust thy head for living one his wound for me shall bleed my faith has found our resting place not in device no greed I
your name be exalted in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, you may take your seat. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. On behalf of the lead pastor and the co-pastor, I welcome each and every one of you to first service of Wednesday Bible study in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, my name is Gold Ovodu. I am an accountant by profession. I serve in this great house at the HOD of Sanctuary Department under the Sanctuary Service Group. Praise the Lord. My assignment this evening is to take us on our Eshadai Covenant Confession. Praise the Lord. Please, I would like the ICT to help us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, can we lift up our right hand? I'll say it at the count of three. One, two, three. In Romans 10, 9, the Bible declares that those who believe and confess faith in Jesus Christ shall be saved. Therefore, I, I proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He died in my place and rose from the dead. His blood cleanses me from all sin. I confess that Jesus Christ is my Savior, my Lord, and my soon coming King. In John 1:12, the Bible declared that when we receive Jesus Christ, we become the sons of God. Therefore, I declare that I'm a member of the family of God. The Holy Spirit is at work in me. I have the DNA of greatness. God is first in everything in my life. I'm an heir of heaven, riches, and glory. I have victory over the devil and his agent. Heaven will be my home at last. In Matthew 10, 40, the Bible declares that when we receive God's blessing by receiving his sentiment, therefore today I receive and honor the ministry of my man of God. I am planted in Gateway International Church. I'm addicted to kingdom service. I'm a generous giver. I'm a soul winner. My destiny is rising daily by prophetic impartation. In Deuteronomy 7 9, the Bible reveals God as a covenant keeper. Therefore, I declare my faith shall I covenant of God. My covenant with God is higher than causes, sickness, poverty, barrenness, witchcraft, and premature death. I declare that 1819 is my covenant year of the scepter. God has given me dominion mandate. I am the best and ahead of the rest. Heaven, spiritual forces work in my favor. Natural law adjusts to accommodate me. Where others say I succeed and strive. I am going forward. I am becoming mighty. Sorry, becoming very great. There shall be no loss or evil report in my family. I am the evidence of El Shaddai. Praise the Lord. Can we beat our hand on our chest? Say, I am the evidence of El Shaddai. May that be your testimony in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Is that how you clap for Jesus? Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor on the left and on the right and make your neighbor welcome to church. Ask him how his day was. Ask him now, how was your day today? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. On behalf of the late pastor, Gateway International Church, and the co-pastor, and the leadership of Gateway International Church, I make welcome all of you to Wednesday Bible Study First Service. Put your hands together for Jesus. Also, the people watching us online, our satellite churches around the world, we also say you're welcome in Jesus' name. You're welcome in Jesus' name. I need us to be alive. Hallelujah. My name is Okeke Chisum. I'm privileged to serve as the Project 40 president of this great church. And also, I'm a food technologist by profession. I'm a chef. I cook. I bake. I'm just a food technologist. Hallelujah. And also, I'm a member of the IFSQN, International Food Safety Quality Network. And also, I'm a member of a wonderful leadership academy, the Fulcrum Leadership Academy that is being pioneered by our pastor, Pastor Mecca Kahlo, endorsed by Pastor George. And I want you to join us in that. If you're single here, we are having a connect dinner service next week with our lead pastor on the 
7th of September. That is next week, Saturday. After this Saturday, the upper Saturday. So please make yourself available for that meeting. Papa gave an instruction that you need to come with a person, a guest. He said, if you are coming and your guest say, ah, I can't come, just turn back and go back. So please make sure you invite someone and you'll be blessed in the name of Jesus. My assignment here is to take us on at a corporate prayer. Our late pastor George Izuma made us understand that prayer does not help our ministry, but prayer is our ministry. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor, I want you to know that prayer does not help our ministry, but prayer is our ministry. Hallelujah. So we're taking from our power seat this evening, seat 28, and the theme is Operation Restore. Hallelujah. God is going to restore every lost years in the name of Jesus. Our key text is taken from Joel 2.23. And it reads, be glad then, ye children of Zion. Be glad, ye children of Gateway. And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. What the God wants you to know is that whatever you have lost between January and now, he will compress it and restore to you now in the name of Jesus. Many a times, believers suffer adverse situations in life, painfully missing out on life's blessings and opportunities. But our God inhabits eternity. He controls times and seasons. Therefore, he can restore the lost and wasted years and reposition you for a better future. Today, receive your restoration in the name of Jesus. God inhabits eternity. Eternity is a timeless zone, and a person or a being that occupies eternity can control time. And Pastor makes us understand that, that since God inhabits eternity, He's going to control time and compress time for you, and your restoration will happen in the name of Jesus. As we jump up now, we're going to pray to God, we're going to cry out to God for restoration in our life. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and begin to welcome Him. Make welcome the Holy Spirit. Thank Him. Jaketelo handi ada kabara teka. Likando jukura hande zeke loko brutu lahari ada kabah. Likande zeke breketo loko baji ada kabara da. Likande zeke rekada raba jandi ada kabah. Lekarado zeko tu balahi ada kabah. Zendo rokambi ada ada kabara da zenda ba. Likanda zeke breketo loko bara bara shaka Likanda zoko breketo ada kabara da shaka Lakendo zeke talaka ada kabara. Zinduro hande zeke breketo laka ada kabah. Father, we worship you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Shintola ba hezi tanda ya kabara. Likande zoko breto la handa kabara. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being the means tonight. Shikande lehoro kabara. Zeke teke dega la kabara da. Likande zoko breto la kabara da. Zeke da la kabara da zendo kia la kabara. Likande zoko breto la kabara. Shukanda la kia la kabara da. Lekonde zianda la kabara da basara da. Lekonda zetu raka da kabara. Likande zetu raka da kabara. We worship you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. Because my past, because my past, my present, present, and my future, and my future is in your hands. Is in your hands. My life, my life did not take you. Did not take you by surprise. By surprise. And therefore, Lord, therefore, Lord, I believe, I believe that you are not mismanaging my life. Just open your mouth and begin to say that to him. Shutola pa, shutola hadi ya kaba, shutete lepro kala hadi ya kaba, likanda zoko breke tala kaba, likanda zeke breke tola hadi ya kaba, lekenda zia kaba, likanda zoko zeka kaba, likanda breke.
Ce le hara kata kapara ra. Li tu ra hana se ke preta laga. We no love you no man is bandaging our lives. Li hana si atala. Let it all. Let sura kaba. Let it the let it break it laga. Li ke so ko break it kapara ra. Me shon bo ko prata la kiya kapara ra. Li kata se ke da kapara ra. Ma zaka je kiya laga. Li kanda se ke break laga. Let it rock kapara ra. 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 Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Lift up and say today. Today I repent. I repent from every sin, from every sin or contamination, contamination that opened the door, that opened the to, door losses to losses in my life. In my life, I receive restoration. I receive restoration in my marriage. In my marriage, I receive restoration. I receive restoration in my career. In my career, I receive restoration, I receive restoration in my business. In my business, all round restoration. All round restoration. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. for in Jesus name we have prayed amen for in Jesus name we have prayed amen one of the packages of restoration is compensation when God comes to restore he compensates compensation means that where you needed to have 10,000 you have 1 million that is compensation hallelujah Praise the Lord. We're gonna lift up and say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, I recover, I recover every lost year, every lost or wasted season, wasted season in my life, in my life, I receive, I receive compensation, compensation for every lost opportunity. For every loss of opportunity. Oh God, oh God, restore, restore. Oh God, oh God, compensate, compensate. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. Shikata, lejoko dasa, lebrese kutelaka, shindala kadeke lekaba. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes this restoration can be sorry, sometimes the losses in our lives can be sponsored by evil manipulation. And that's why the Bible said that whatever
tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we shall condemn. You're going to lift up your hand and say, today, today, I bring judgment, I bring judgment to every demonic, to every demonic and evil horn that, that has afflicted my life. Afflicted I, my command life. I command the heavenly carpenters the heavenly to carpenter. knock them down. To, to knock them down. To knock Open them up down. your mouth and begin to speak. To knock them down. 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 Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I was listening to Papa's message when he was talking about he was addressing family poverty. He said that the only thing that can terminate destiny shame is favor. The only thing that can terminate destiny shame is favor. The Bible made us understand that Israelites served the Egyptians for 430 years. But one night, one night, one day, favor spoke. And the, the wages of 430 years was paid in one night. We're going to ask God for favor. When we're talking about restoration, it is favor that can cause the kind of restoration you need. One favor, one open door can answer the question of 10 years. We're going to lift up and say, Father, Father, give me favor. Give me favor. Before everyone, before everyone who's involved, who is involved in, or is needed, or is needed in, my in my restoration. Say, Father, Father give me favor. Give me favor. Before everyone, before everyone who, is needed, who is needed for my restoration. For my restoration. Say, Father, Father, touch their hearts. Touch their hearts. Cost them. To invest, to invest in my lifting. In my Open lifting. up your mouth and begin to pray. Thank you, Lord, we For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We're going to pray for Gateway Church. Link your hands across to your neighbor and lift up your hands and say, Father, Father, we declare, we declare that, Gateway Church that Gateway Church is moving forward. It's moving forward. And the gates of hell, and the gates of hell cannot, prevail over her. cannot prevail over her. Say, Gateway, Gateway go forward. Go forward. Grow mighty. Grow mighty. Become great. Become Open great. up your mouth and begin to pray. Shakatalata. Likanda zoko brekete leke nagaba. Leken zeko toko breka nagabada. Shekabra ziyada kabada. Lekando zoko breka nagabada. Zeko roko dalata lakabada. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Still holding your neighbor's hand, we're going to pray for our lead pastor. We're going to ask God for increased anointing, increased strength, increased wisdom, increase on every side of his life. Hallelujah. 
Lift up and say, Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Exalt. Exalt. And honor. And honor. The ministry. The ministry. Of your servants. Of your servants. Pastor George is one. Pastor George is one. Anoint him afresh. Anoint him afresh. And announce him. Announce to the ends of the earth. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. Thank you, Lord, we worship. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Lift up your hands and begin to thank God for answer to prayer. Just thanking, answer to prayer. Thank you for the restoration. He's bringing his life. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Lord, we have cried out to you for restoration. We ask, O oh God, let restoration begin in our lives now in the name of Jesus. The prophet Elijah said, by this time tomorrow, I'm standing upon here on the anointing of my father. And I said to someone, by this time tomorrow, there will be a change of story for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, worship. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Put your hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I bring you greetings on behalf of the lead pastor and the co-pastor of Gateway International Church. Make someone welcome by your side. Greet someone. My name is Prince Paul Oyibo. I'm a printer. And this great commission, I serve under the office of the co-pastor as the HOD program publicity team. And our assignment in the house is to carry out publicity. When we have programs to go out for publicity. So I'm inviting you after the close of service, you can meet me and join the team. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. My assignment tonight is to take us on the church we are. You, you lift up your hand and, or you, you say, uh, you lift up your hand, say after me. We are the most friendly church in our city. Number two, we are the church where people genuinely encounter God. A church of 100% God first people. A church that imparts people with strength to handle whatever life brings. A church that turns ordinary people into leaders. A church that honors marriage and blesses families. And a church that makes so winning and church planting our core assignment. God bless you. Hallelujah. You're all welcome tonight. Turn to your neighbor and say, welcome to church. If any of you are on WhatsApp and have me as a contact, you'd have seen my updates today. I'm so happy. Praise the Lord. I'm not happy because money entered my account. It is coming. But you know what it is to wake up every day and be home. Yesterday night, I got a call late in the night and somebody was telling me of how they are checking whether it is cancer that he has. I know somebody else looking for 800,000 by next week to go through chemo. There's so much happening. That's why whenever I come to God's presence these days, I come to say thank you. I don't know what you're going through, but whatever you're going through could have been worse. And 
and I think we should just tell him thank you for helping us this far. It may not be perfect yet. It may not be beautiful yet. It may not be that you have seen all that he has promised. But he's faithful. He is good. He is true. He's merciful. He deserves our praise. He deserves our thanks. People of God, just by yourself, by yourself. I don't know what you want to say. But open your mouth. Begin to express the love. Begin to tell him how much you appreciate him. Father, we give you praise. Oh Lord, we love you. Why I sing to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the reason of my life today. I am here to say oh, yes. it's all because of you. It's all because of you, Lord. You are the reason. You are the reason why I live my voice. Why I live my voice. Why I sing to you. Why I sing to you. You are the reason. You are the reason. I'm alive. I'm alive today. I am here to say. I'm 
heaven let your voices go up to heaven lift up your hands lift up your voice lift up your faith lift up your praise let there be a communication between the heavens the throne of grace and us here today we know in whom we have believed we know in whom we have come to put our trust. We come before you, our God, of life, of grace, of mercy, of strength. We come before you in worship. We come before you in abandon. We come before you in faith. And we say, Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, as we began to pray, I just sensed that it's like we were burning a furnace. That was why I said your voices should go higher. You know what a furnace is? When they put firewood to make fire. As your voices are coming higher, that's what I'm seeing in the spirit. That there is a bigger fire that is growing. And I don't know what that fire is going to address. There is something about corporate pray prayer. There's come something about believers joining their hands together and crying out to the Lord. As we go into this process again, lift up your voice. Begin to cry out to Jehovah. It may not be for you, but for our neighbor, fire will come upon him. For your neighbor, fire will come upon her. And whatever the enemy has put in her life, whatever the enemy has put in his life, will be brought to nothing. Lift up your voice. Let's shake her. and 
they will never gather again in the name of Jesus. Amen. They will never gather again. I don't know who they are. I don't know what the purpose is. But they will never gather again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Perfect your work, Holy Spirit. Perfect your work, Holy Spirit. Perfect your work, Holy Spirit. Oh, man, this I can't all over those. I just feel that the windows are open. I feel that the doors are open. I feel we are entering into a time that there can be no impossibility. I don't know what you came here for tonight, but the Lord is available. He is able. He is ready. He is willing to deliver, to save, to heal, to give a new beginning. Lift up your voice and collect your portion. Whatever you're looking out for from heaven, take it now. Take it now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord says the torment is over. I don't know who has been afflicted with anxiety. This morning as I was reading my Bible, God showed me something. A wicked king came to attack Hezekiah. And the Bible says he began to talk. And he made sure he spoke in a language that they would understand. And he was shouting at the loudest part of his voice. And God said to me, he said, that is how anxiety speaks. That is how worry speaks. That is how fear comes. It shouts. It makes sure that you are terrified. And then when you're weak, it will strike. But I'm here to tell you, by, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, every single voice from the pit of hell will shut up forever in the name of Jesus. Whoever you are, that has been afflicted by worry. You have been afflicted by anxiety. I'm not just talking of the temporal one. Oh, how I go do today? No. You are sitting down. You're looking at your tomorrow. And you can see that there is no way forward. I want you to come to the altar. Because fire is coming down. Fire is coming down. Fire is coming down. Fire is coming down. Is coming down. No matter what the enemy has planned. No matter what intention he has for his you. No no matter what he has put in motion against your life, today it will break. Whatever looks like it doesn't have an answer, an answer will come today. An answer will come today. An answer will come today. In the name of Jesus, man, don't about There's a scripture that came to my heart. And the way I'm going to interpret it may sound a little bit funny. In Proverbs, the Bible says that there are some people who are too lazy that when they go and get their hunting, the animal they hunted, they are too lazy to cook it. But today, God is not rebuking anybody. What came to my mind was that the prayer we have prayed it's like fire that has been put under an animal to roast it to be done. And I'm here to tell you that your answer is cooked and it is delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that you did not know, whatever it is that you could not handle, by mercy today, the Lord gives you your solution in the name of Jesus you need to do is touch the altar, receive your portion and go back to your seat. Father, thank you. 
Your children will never seek you and go without an answer. We give you praise for the solution. We give you praise for the miracle. We give you praise for the help. We give you praise for everything you have divinely released for your children to come out with a testimony. No more worry. No more anxiety. That voice that is shouting loud, I seize it now. I shut that mouth up. In the name of Jesus. In quietness and confidence shall be your peace. It is well with you. Father, we thank you. As we go into your word, we ask that it will not just be like any other day. We ask that you speak into every heart and you give us grace to carry your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Please take your seats. This is Fire Wednesday, and fire has come. This fire will never quench in the name of Jesus. Our theme so far, and we all know, is the bush is burning. Can you tell your neighbor, the bush is burning? No, now if bush is burning, is that how you say it? Say it well. The bush is burning, eh? Hey. Some of us, we are so dull. Nothing excites us anymore. You have to be excited. If you want to live this life and live it long, you have to be excited. You know how people, people who will not live for long, do you know how they laugh? <laughs> As if there is strong poo-poo and they don't want it to come out. You know? People that will live long, they... <laughs> release yourself and have life in Jesus' mighty name. So last week, the lead pastor, who sends his love, by the way, just take note, every time he's living here, he's missing you, but since duty has called, and of course, he needs more grace so he can deliver more of God's word and more of God's promises to you, he had to go away. So right now, he's in Abuja at the minister's conference of our grandpa, Daddy Paul Enichi. So we are sure that when he's coming back, he's coming back with fire hallelujah so that's why i'm here today to take the bible study will be very fast i pray god will speak to every heart and tonight we're going to be dealing with set yourself on fire set yourself on fire so quickly let's look at our key text it says in exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to three exodus three one to three let me give you time to open to your scripture exodus three verse one to three it says now moses kept the flock of jethro his father-in-law take note now he's saying now that means he's talking about his current situation implying that there was a situation before this anyone who is in a who is a bible scholar knows that this was not the beginning of Moses' story. Praise the Lord. How many of us know that Moses' story did not begin in Exodus chapter 3? It began before this time. The Bible tells us that he was born and the mother looked upon him and saw that he was a proper child. Whereas every other person was releasing their sons to be killed by the wicked Pharaoh of their time, the mother of Moses said, no, this boy is different. I cannot release him. And what did she do? She wrapped him up, kept him quiet for three months. After that, she took him to the river Nile and kept him there in a basket. And the Bible says that his elder sister looked on, her, on him until Pharaoh's daughter came and saw this boy. The amazing thing is that that lady knew that her father had made a decree and the only reason why a male child will be in a basket not as an abandoned child but as a preserved one is because they are trying to keep this child away from her father's reach but in spite of that knowledge she picked him up and nurtured him in her house I want to tell you 
that whoever is supposed to help you will locate you and nurture you in spite of any other thing they may hear or know they will do you good in the name of Jesus Christ so that was how Moses grew up and he was there in the palace feeling frisky doing like a boy of the house landlord, owner he was a big man raising his shoulders he was somebody who was in authority because the Bible tells us that he got to the point that one day he was walking and he saw somebody beating an Israelite and he had the effrontery to talk to him that means that he had authority he was somebody who could go about supervising and querying and rebuking so he did it and after he gave that man one blow I don't know how many he gave him the man died he buried the man Moses was strong I mean physical strength buried him after burying him he went back on his high horse and was riding away thinking that he had done something for Jehovah only for him to come back again and see two Israelites fighting and this time he was like brethren why are they tear shed now you people are supposed to love yourselves and then somebody asked him who made you judge over us at that point Moses knew he was in trouble the thing he thought he had done in the secret was already out so he ran he left the palace he left the glory of the palace he left the pleasures of the palace left everything ran away for his life and ended up in the wilderness and he became a shepherd I hope you know that before he went on that journey he thought that he was the chosen one he thought that he was the anointed one he believed that he was the deliverer of Israel but one encounter made him lose all his confidence I pray that there's nothing that would take the carpet away under your feet I pray you will always be able to stand tall in spite of anything that happens around you and you will still deliver on God's call on your life in the name of Jesus Christ so he had left the palace and he had come to the wilderness he was now a farmer a shepherd a nobody and he led the flock to the backside of the desert please just in case if you haven't got my book one of my first small book please try and buy it I think it's 300 naira the backside of the mountain you need to read that book please go and pick it up because a lot of what we are going to talk about was dealt with in a different dimension though so continuing with the verse so and came to the mountain of God even to Horeb and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush he looked and behold the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed and Moses said I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt hallelujah hallelujah I want to begin by saying that every burning bush is a call every burning bush every burning bush and now I'm not talking about physical burning bushes because maybe until one of you come and behave like pastors um, pastor introduced me one day to his schoolmate and he said oh this is the man I told you that drove from here to is it Tunisia or oh, anyway he crossed Africa upwards through the Sahara Desert I asked the man I said was there no money for flight he said there was money but he just wanted to have the experience I said okay peace be unto you so except the other man who may decide to take a journey through the Sahara Desert I don't know whether you will actually ever have the opportunity to see a physical burning bush you may not but around you, there are burning bushes every day. There are spectacular things. Things that should catch your attention. Things that should make you ask why. 
things that should make you ask what, things that should make you take an action, they are around you every day. When you see those burning bushes, God is calling your attention to something. Are we together? Moses had been in the wilderness for so long. From what I heard, what I have read before, they said that burning bushes were even common. It's not something strange to see a bush catch fire by itself. But what made that one unique was that even though the bush was on fire, the bush was not burning out. He saw something different. My question is, have you seen anything? Anything that's a bit different? Anything that made you stop to ask what is happening here? Why is it happening this way? Do you know whether you have missed an opportunity that God has given to tell you, come, I want to tell you something? I pray we will not miss our burning bushes in the name of Jesus. Any divine attraction deserves your attention. Any divine attraction deserves your attention. Please do not be so carnally minded that God will be using supernatural things to call you, to beckon on you. And you will tell yourself that it is of no importance or in non-entity. Do you know that the hunger we used to have in those days is no longer the same we are seeing today? Please, people who got born again that 1970, 1980, 1990, can I see your hand up? Give me that old time religion. Old time. No, don't sing. Ask these people. That time, the supernatural, everything that is divine, everything about God, everything that will draw you heavenward was a hunger and a thirst of every believer. These days we have become so distracted that the things that are divine seem to have no influence, no yearning, no pull on us. I don't know what weight it is. I don't know what it is that the enemy has put upon the believers of today that has made us lose sight of the things that are important to God. But whatever they are, today fire will consume them. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're made for more than this. I don't believe that God gathered us together to be coming to church and all of us will remain at the level we are till we die. No. We are supposed to grow. We are supposed to do exploits. We are supposed to shake our world. We are supposed to be the answer for our generation. But not many of us, we don't have the hunger. There's no desire anymore. What we want is money. 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 Money for the house. Important. Money for school fees. Important. Money for our health. Important. Money for clothes, for cars. Important, yes. But they are not more important than God. And the supernatural is supposed to be what we are desirous of. When I was young, I remember prayer meetings that we will go. Me, I don't even know how to pray, how those people used to pray. In fact, at a point, I'll just sit down and be looking at them and be saying, God, help me to pray like them. That's there they are praying. Me, I'm looking at them and saying, God, help me pray like them. You would know the desperation. God, I need you. They're crying to heaven so that God can put fire on them so that they can go out and change their world. But today when we gather, we are binding demons. We are commanding favor. And we are not thinking about the kingdom. May the Lord help us. 
Can I hear you say, Father, help me? In Jesus' name. Kingdom enterprise flourishes on obedience, not qualification. Kingdom enterprise, the business of the kingdom, the business of God, the venture that God has set up for humanity, where he's doing his own thing to make sure that he takes over and he possesses the people and the people love him. All those things, they thrive and flourish on obedience, not qualification. And why am I saying this? If any of you looked at Moses well, you will know that he felt he was not qualified. You know how he argued with God almost five times, trying to persuade God to get somebody else to go on this assignment. And God didn't care about whether he was qualified or not. All he wanted was a man who would say yes. And today, all he needs is a man who will say yes, or a woman who will say yes. And as you say yes, he will use you to bring his people into the promised land. I pray you will be one of those who will say yes. I want to hear you shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can I hear you scream it? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's no other qualification that's important. Ah, God was speaking now. Jesus was speaking. He said, look, if you don't praise me, even the stones. The Bible has told us of how a man was going on a journey that God didn't want him to go. He made even an ass, a donkey, to open the mouth and tell him, okay? This is your waka. God will break your head. He can use anything. So why don't you let him use you? Why do you believe the lie that says you are not good enough? Why listen to the voice that brings out your weaknesses and your failures and all the things that are bad about your life to your front to stop you? Why? Why listen to that voice? Meanwhile, there is a voice that knows you as you are. That made you as you are. That understands all your weaknesses and is saying, come. I want you. I love you. I can use you. And yet you will not listen to that voice. It's time for the church to open his ears and connect to the frequency of heaven. It's time to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I pray that your ears will be open. I pray your heart will accept. And I pray that you will be one of those who will be obedient. And the blessing of obedience will follow you in the name of Jesus. So let's quickly go into what we are supposed to discuss for today. Our papa in the house has said something before. He said, one of the rules of visibility is simply be different. Praise the Lord. Remember, we're talking about set yourself on fire. So if you want to be visible, all you need to do is to be different. I know that God guides people into how they can be different. He will guide you and he will show you how you can stand out in the name of Jesus. Normal does not make news or attract attention, but abnormal does. I pray that you will not follow the way of the world, but you will follow the way that God is carving out for you today. And as you follow that path, you will enter into glory in the name of Jesus. John Wesley said something. He said, set yourself on fire. And the world will come and watch you burn. Physically speaking, I think there was somebody a few years back. I don't know what he was agitating for, but he set himself on fire. And people watched him burn. John Wesley wasn't talking about the physical fire. He was talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost. He was talking about going into your quiet place and cooking yourself going down deep into God so much that when you come out you come out as a different man set yourself on fire hallelujah 
Okay. So quickly, going forward, we're going to concentrate more on show me your glory. You know, the Bible tells us that Moses at a point, fast forward, I think we're going to be fast forwarding like 20 years or so, or almost 40 years, I don't know how long. The Bible tells us that one day, Moses had to go. Okay, no, it wasn't up to 20 years. Maybe let's say 10 years or five or one. Anyway, I wasn't there. I don't know. Praise the Lord. So fast forward. Fast forward to after the children of Israel had come out of Egypt. And they were already on the journey. And Moses went to be with the Lord. And he stayed with the Lord for a period of time. And when he came back, nobody could look at his face because the glory of the Lord had come upon him. You may not have 40 days or four days to just take out to pray. But if you can consistently take, even if it's 15 minutes every day, to say, Lord, your glory, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your face. Let me see something about you, God, every day. There's no way that something will not happen to you. I want that hunger to come. I want it to come upon you. I want you to begin to desire it. And I want you to know that it's not going to deprive you of anything that is good in this life. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Some people feel that they cannot pursue after God because they have to give up so many things. Yes, you will give up. But even though you're giving up, it's not depriving you of the good things that God expects his children to enjoy on earth. Don't be afraid of going into his presence. Don't be afraid. So please take note, the burning bush encounter cannot be complete without the glory of God. So yes, you have the burning bush. You finish hearing a voice call you and give you an assignment. But without the glory of God, you cannot fulfill the assignment. You cannot do all that God expects you to do. I pray, I pray, I pray that we will call for God's glory. And he will show us in the name of Jesus. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 18, I'm going to read 18 to 22. It says, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Just before this verse, Moses has said, God, if you will not go with me, I will not go any further. Are we together? So he got to that point where he knew that even though he had the burning bush experience, even though he had the calling, even though he has been given an assignment, he has even started and come to a point. But he knew he could not take the people to the very end if he did not have the glory. So he came back and said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there is no man see me and live. And there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. And thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And after God had finished talking to Moses with the baritone voice, yours truly, Moses got there and was kept in the cliff of the rock. And the Lord passed with his glory. And Moses was never the same again. I pray. I pray. I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you. 
that you will see his glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Your life will never be the same again. Your life will never be the same. So what is glory? The glory of God is the weight of God. The heaviness. You know, I, I, can, I can use some kind of silly illustrations. Please forgive me. But you know, there's a difference between swallowing semu and swallowing eba. Or pandedium. If you swallow semo, how do you feel? Light, isn't it? If you take eba or pounded yam, not the one that they use with machine, the one that they did like doom, doom, doom. After eating it, what happens? Heavy. Something just does boom inside your body. That is how the glory is. It is a boom of heaven on top of you. It's the weight of God's presence. Tangible presence. You can almost feel it. You can almost feel it. And it is there upon all God's children. But the more you desire it, the more it manifests in your life. That is why we are crying out for the glory. Amen? The glory is that which makes a difference between a believer and and a non-believer. We are not all the same. We may be in the same world. We may experience the same challenges. But the truth is that there is something different about us. And that is the glory. Hallelujah. It is God's mark of approval upon his people. It is God's manifest presence. That gives rest. And I believe God that as we desire the glory of God, it will become real to us. Okay, so quickly, how do you get to tap into God's glory? How do you get to tap into God's glory? We have already read an illustration by Moses. Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. So the first thing is for you to ask for it. Ask for it and look for it. It's one thing to ask. It's another thing for you to desire it and pursue after it. So look for God's glory. If you're not expecting God's glory, you won't even see it. But I pray God will make you see it in Jesus' name. In Acts chapter 7, verse 55. We have the story of um, Stephen who was about to die. He was being stoned and the scripture tells us that he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Hallelujah. So I'm saying you ask and you look for the glory. You look for it. You search for it in the place of prayer. You search for it in scripture. You come to church expecting to meet it. And somehow, one way or the other, you will get in contact with the glory of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, We all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same likeness or into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. So if we can get to that point where we are looking into him, looking into the world, looking into into a picture that he is able to show us we will carry the glory you know I, I got born again many many years ago and for some reason I never felt qualified 
to be a carrier of his glory. Number one, I had my personal challenges, my weaknesses, my shortcomings. Number two, I had people who were judging me based on the fact that I didn't fit in to how they felt Christians should feel. Look, are we together? So I, I got born again and then got into a very spiritual church. But I had parents who said, if you take off this your earring, you will go out of my house. If you start tying your hair, Toban, I will stop paying you school fees. Praise the Lord. And not because they are not Christians. They were just saying that because they did not want me to go in a way that they didn't feel was necessary. Praise the Lord. And yours truly, it's not like God had said, man, when I don't wear. I was just about to follow because every other person was doing it. I had a discussion with my mom, and my mom was like, can you not serve God even if you have earrings on? Okay, if you take these earrings off now, will you later on regret? And if you do, will you want to wear them again? And how will you look if, you know, there was a discussion. And I now realize that, okay, I didn't really need to do that for God to approve of me. Church, are we together? I'm speaking of me, and I'm not condemning anybody else who follows a doctrine that limits the addressing and so on. Are we together? But coincidentally, I was in a church that appreciated ladies who didn't wear earrings, who wore maxi dresses, who looked in a particular way. So anytime I appear, it's as if the sinner... And I keep telling you people, you know, you people say I'm fine now. Thank you, I know. I was fine. No be now. That time, hey! I was one hot babe. So, as I come in, even I didn't know, but as I enter, my hair was long and I will be, I don't know how I used to do anyway. But as far as they were concerned, they said, I'm mommy water. I think I don't even want to start gisting. For those of you who are new, at the time that my husband had formally told his pastor that, oh, this is the girl he wants to marry, they brought him a tape recommending him to watch that video. You know all those Mount Zion videos where the pastor will be praying and then the witches and wizards will send a woman to come and become his wife and then he will marry her and then the ministry will die. That's how the pastor told him, I recommend this to you. In public, I nearly died. If that one did not kill me, nothing shall kill me. So now, because I kept having those vibes that I wasn't good at, I had my internal wars. I've talked about some of my challenges, the issues I went through, the things that I knew that God didn't like, temptations I kept falling into, mistakes I kept making. I had all those things fighting me inside. And then outside, I had people who could not accept me for who I was. And yet, I used to hear that, look, I have called you for something. And I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, take everything that voice was saying. Because of the loudness of every other voice speaking around me. But as I began to go into the world, look, it's good to find people that love the world. And it's better to find people that would actually take you into the world. Look, as you begin to hear this word, your life will change. He began to speak to me. I began to hear something different. I began to go into the place of prayer. I began to see that everything that they were saying about me were like coffins. You know how corn is in the cup. It's as if all those things on me were the coverings of the cup. 
And as I pray every day, God is pulling one nonsense off and pulling another nonsense off and pulling bits off until they come that I am. That people can eat. People have come to eat of me. Has come to manifest. And I am not there yet. Oh. There is still more. So look for the glory. Look, look, ask for it. Look for it. Pursue it. It's not just for this spiritual work. The glory of God can affect every area of your life. It can affect your marriage. You may be husband and wife in a war zone right now. If two of you begin to seek the face of the Lord, if two of you begin to ask God for his glory, it will not be long. Two of you will not be seeing your faces anymore. You're going to be seeing Jesus in each other's face. There is no way peace cannot come. In the place of your business, you may not know what to do. You may not have answers. You may be in difficulty. But you just seek the glory of God. And somehow, he begins to drop inspiration. Begins to drop guidance. Begins to give you words that you just follow. Like a mumu. And before you know, you're at the result you're looking at. Glory answers. And it will come to you in Jesus' name. As we behold him, as we look on him, as we desire him, we are transformed. Your transformation begins today in the name of Jesus. Everything around you, on you, that shouldn't be with you, that needs to fall off, will fall off in the name of Jesus. The glory of the Lord will transform you into the likeness he has for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Look into it. Number two, pray for the glory. Pray. Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Seek, you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. It's not rocket science. There is nothing so great about seeking God's face. There's no formula. Some people think it's only for pastors. They are the only ones who know how to hear God. They are the only ones who know how to seek God. No. All he wants is a willing heart. All he wants is somebody who says, I'm available. Take me, use me, have me. Do what you want to do with me. And then you pray like that, he will come. He will come. He will come. But, you know, it's important that we carry the glory of God now. We are in perilous times. We are in the worst, as far as I'm concerned, this seems to be the worst time of humanity. The kind of wickedness being done. Things that you cannot even imagine. You watch them on film. You're wondering how did they think it to act it. And people are copying it strange, mad nonsense everywhere. The whole earth is looking for you and me for us to manifest the glory for change to come. You will carry his glory. Everybody in this church, unless, unless I don't know how you take Wakako, but if God brought you into this house, the glory must rest on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8. I want us to go there together. And if children, I'm reading from verse 17. Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Verse 18 says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worth, worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. This world is waiting 
for the manifestation of the sons of God. And how will the sons of God be manifested? By glory. By glory. There's a glory that is supposed to be revealed in us that will satisfy the longing and the desire of the world that is waiting for change. And if we don't manifest that glory, people around us will keep suffering. People around us will keep going on a journey to hell. People around us will remain in torment. People around us will remain in darkness until that glory that is supposed to manifest in us begins to manifest. The whole world is waiting, but not just the world, even God. God is waiting for you to manifest his glory. Whatever is holding you back from that manifestation, break out of your life in the name of Jesus. The devil knows that a change will happen when you come up. He knows that there's going to be something different in your environment when you begin to carry his glory. So what does he do? He tries to make sure you don't get it. If you even manage to touch it, he does many things to make sure you fail. Do you notice that when you begin to pray more, you begin to study more, you begin to flow in that place of grace, that that is when you see more temptations coming your way? Just make up your mind now and say, I will not, whatever it is I used to do, you will know what you do. I will not do that doing thing that I used to do before. You will see how that thing will just come and be everywhere around you. The devil is trying to make sure that you do not get and maintain your glory. But he will not succeed. Whatever he did yesterday is the last time he will ever succeed in your life. From today, you will carry his glory in the name of Jesus. But the glory of God is also delicate. So you have to manage it very well. I want to read two verses and then we'll get up to pray. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8 it says let thy garment always be white and let thy head lack no ointment the ointment is speaking of the oil the oil of God of course is the glory of God may your head never lack it in the name of Jesus but the next verse is where I'm going which is in Ecclesiastes 10 verse 1 it said dead flies cause the ointment of the, of the uh -huh. I've come to this verse this word every time I climb the pulpit this word will go apost Pastor, Pastor Mecca, I beg, you may go to school. Try tell me, wait a minute, that thing. Dead flies cause the ointment of. Olden days chemistry. It says she's calling it the olden days chemistry. Hallelujah. Okay, so the dead, dead flies cause the ointment of the. Apothecary. Hey, thank God. See the deliverance here. All of you sitting down there. See how many you are. You left me to float. God will forgive you. Okay, so the dead flies, praise the Lord, cause the ointment of the apothecary. Apothecary. <laughs> to send forth a stinking savour. So does a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. It's the beginning part we're talking about, we're taking, that just dead flies, small, small nonsenses can make a beautiful ointment, nice perfume, begin to smell like mess or poo-poo from the soccer week. Dead flies in your life can contaminate, can try to destroy the glory of God on your life. But tonight, if there's any dead fly, it will die. As for the glory, you must cover it. You must walk in it. You must recover it. You must live with it. It will surround you. It will possess you. It will overshadow you and overflow from you. His glory reign in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Please rise up on your feet. To see your 
acknowledged you forgive my backsliding forgive my turning back forgive my carelessness with you I return to you I ask that you forgive me and give me a second chance in the name of Jesus if you made that prayer please don't be ashamed I would like you to come out the rest of you can you take hold of your neighbor's hand? I believe in the prayer of agreement. No, I want two people. Two, 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 two. If you made that prayer, please come out. If you made that prayer, please walk to the altar. I want you to say, neighbor, in the name of Jesus, whatever dead fly is in your ointment, whatever dirtiness is on your garment, whatever sin weakness get out to heaven. Father, I cover your children with the blood of Jesus. Everything that can disqualify, everything that can pollute, your blood is able to swallow. Swallow them up in the name of Jesus. Change every garment here. Pure white. 
pure white and cause your glory to rest upon your children. I ask for an increasing appetite for you, an increasing appetite for your presence, for me and for everybody whose hands are up tonight. Father, let us hunger for you. And as we hunger, fill us up. Show us your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Tight. Lift up the offering, lift up your tight. We will give our offering with a shout of victory. Make a joyful noise unto the God of us. This kind of uh, shout looks like us now. Shout. Shout a better shout now. Ah. Father, we thank you. We bless you for your faithfulness. Dying is the kingdom, the power. As we give to you tonight, we ask that it come as a sweet smelling salvo. Respond to us with a covenant in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For those who are giving their tithe, the one tenth, as they bring this, he said, When Abraham brought tithe to Melchizedek, Melchizedek brought forth bread and wine, which is the symbol of the communion. We declare our children, born and unborn, will partake of the goodness of tithe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The windows of heaven are open unto us. We will return with testimonies of your goodness in Jesus' precious name. Please cast in your offering, and then those who have their tithe, please come to the table of Melchizedek in Gateway when you give your tithe. We also ask you to partake of the bread and wine because when Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek, Melchizedek brought forth bread and wine, which is a symbol of the communion. So come to the table of Melchizedek. While we're doing that, listen to the following gazette announcement. Our workers vigil this Friday, and the time is 10 p.m. I thought we would celebrate Jesus. Workers vigil. That means you belong to a service group. It doesn't mean if you work with RGV. Ongoing programs, Aviva Voice Challenge. Audition now in progress this Saturday. The time is 8 a.m. 8 a.m. is the time. I think last week we did uh, over 71. 79, okay. So we'll continue. Preteens and MT1 discipleship training and baptism will come up this Sunday. That's the 1st of September. Preteens and teenagers will be having their MT1. That's discipleship training and baptism this Sunday. That's the 1st of September, 2019. New skill challenge continues. Contact the Welcome Center. Just go to the Welcome Information Hub and they will give you the update. Upcoming events also. Fruitful Women program with the lead pastor this Saturday, the 31st day of August. The time is 7 a.m. Fruitful Women will be meeting with the lead pastor this Saturday. The time is 7 a.m. September Prophetic Warfare. So we're already in September. Make a joyful noise unto the God of our salvation. We'll be reactivating all the covenant in Gateway, covenant of Ursh, covenant of preservation, covenant of Ebenezer, covenant of. You don't know. <laughs> From this Sunday, and that's the 1st of September down to the third, third day of um, September, time is 5 p.m. So after five services on Sunday, come back.